Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin. Alan Ruff, Lee McCulloch and Tam McManus are with me here today. And here's what's coming up on the show. Philippe Clement aiming to repair the bond between fans and players starting this weekend against Hibs. One thing is really important for me, I want to create much more the bond between supporters, the fans and the players again. Brendan Rodgers named Manager of the Month for September as Celtic gets set for Tynecastle trip. Nick Montgomery says it will be difficult for Ibrox boss to implement ideas after only a week in the job. I'm sure he'll try and implement some of his identity and, and, and what he wants to do with the team. Um, but it's pretty difficult in, in a week. SPFL announced record turnover as Neil Doncaster points to continuing popularity of Scottish football. Yeah, positive note to end on there. We'll discuss that. But the negative is that some fans are obviously going to miss out on some football this weekend. Uh, and in the Scottish Premiership, uh, Aberdeen against Dundee and St Johnson against Motherwell has fallen foul of the weather um, because the conditions are treacherous. And you've got to, especially ahead of time, take into consideration, Ruffy, the fans and just give them prior warning on this one. Yeah, I mean, the danger's out there for everybody to be seen, all the warnings everybody's getting, you know, some supporters are travelling quite far, you know, and it is pretty dangerous, particularly the wind at this particular time, but, uh, you know, I think it's sensible, because we always get, you know, you, you waited too long before you cancelled it, and we're travelling here and all that, so... We're not going to have that carry on this time. Yeah, and, and you can, I think you posted something on your uh, Twitter. Some of the parks flooded completely, although not, not the one, it wasn't actually Breakin's Park, but it was a, a photograph certainly in the Breakin area. Yeah, I think, the, I think the further north you go, I think the, the worse the weather's getting. So obviously that's why the Aberdeen, Perth, uh, St Johnson games are off up at Perth. So listen, you, you want to go and enjoy the game. You don't want to be sitting in howling wind and rain. Uh, and it's, as I said, it's dangerous conditions up there. A lot of roads flooded. So I think it's the right call. And I think more, more games will follow in the coming hours, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just keeping you up to date, six matches so far. Um, we've mentioned Aberdeen and Perth because of the difficulty with the Storm Babbitt, as they're calling it. Um, are both Cove, Elgin and Stenhouse Muir, those matches also postponed as well. Shocker, bro, has been off. Yeah, <laughs> I, know. I know exactly what you're talking about, Ruffy. Um, tell at least oh, one no. Tell him about your kick out. I mean, I mean the kid that know the kick out really goes and it comes back. You can't catch it. The goalkeeper can't catch it. It's against the law. I thought you would go and tell the story with Dick Campbell when we played him with Patrick Thistle. They decided to shoot with the wind. Okay, so every time the ball went out for a bye kick, a throw in, balls were getting rolled on know as quick as possible, five, six balls and all that, and then they, we turned around, Patrick Thistle was shooting the other way, it was one ball. Every <laughs> 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 time the ball went out, it was no ball. So, <laughs> Dick, you know, Dick. Yeah. You know, and it became a farce. It really did. Absolutely. Um, no surprise that's off then. Uh, of the games that are on, we'll talk about them, but just a quick look back, obviously, since this is the Friday, looking back at France 4, Scotland 1. Lee, um, Steve Clark is adamant that you'll learn more playing against better sides completely uh, better players you want to test yourself it was a chance for the the fringe ones um, to come in and don't get me wrong France are, are obviously world class players but it was probably a good experience for the boys I think um, after the run and momentum the, the national teams picked up um, I think you, you just take that result just take it and move on but I think the, the boys started well yeah. Billy Gilmore, first goal. Good uh, one so as well, was wasn't it? Positive. It was a great composed finish. Um, so there's always positives to take, even when the, the scoreline, I'm not going to say flattered them, but it was quite a heavy scoreline. So I think there's always positives to take, and the, the boys have more experience for, for that. Yeah, and, and, and positives? What positives did you see? Do you think there are players there that have said, look, if called upon, out with his strongest 11, mm. we're there, we can do it? Yeah, I think Billy Gilmore obviously has won. Uh, I think the competition for places in that Scotland squad is, is massive at the minute. I think he came in and Lewis Ferguson came in and played OK. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm strong. There's, there's players in there who want to put their name forward for getting in the team, never mind the squad. So I think, I don't think it was a great friendly for us to take on, to be honest. I think that's us now lost three games in a row. You know, I know we're playing England, yeah. you know, England, Spain, and, and France are yeah. difficult games, but. Are you not happy with that? I, I'm. I know the SFA probably done it for probably financial reasons, you know, they're getting a few quid, but... No, no, Steve Clark has just basically said, listen, we're going to play and we're going to continue to play 
higher ranked sides, better quality nations, so that the players get that sense of where they are and what they need to try and aspire to. Yep, yeah, obviously you can take it that way as well, Peter. But uh, I think I'm going to tell a, you what the manager said. I know, as, as a player, you know, you're, you're obviously want to pit yourself up against the best. But we were on a good run up until those games, to be honest. The England friendly and then that friendly. Uh, it's been two pretty heavy defeats, to be honest, uh, comprehensive defeats. So where the players learn from that, I don't know. But uh, it shows you the standard that you're going to come up against in Euros. Yeah, uh, you can just get the cigars out because, I mean, honestly, <laughs> you guys just played against one of the, the best French <laughs> sides of the last 20 years and just kicked the ball away. It was fantastic, wasn't uh, it? Uh, amazing. Um, but going back to that, the, that's it's great for the players to experience that, playing against and bappies and stuff. You can only get confidence when you come away from it. Probably at the time, very, very difficult. Obviously, yeah. one of the best players in the world. But to come away from that and you reflect on it. And I think the nation had Scotland right up at the top when we were flying high. And then England came. And everybody's seen Scotland have got Levels. a big, big level to get up to elite. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think there's a wee bit of a ground in there. So the last three games against the three teams... I, th I think it's a positive, believe it or not. I think it's feet back in the ground, we go again, we get back to what we're good at and that's working hard and, and getting the ball in the box. Was there ever a player at international level, you come off the park and you thought, oh, I thought I was okay, but this guy just <clears throat> made me, gave me the absolute... All in them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably the, the France game would have been Henri. Probably Henri, like, physically... Like so strong and so quick and technical as well, so couldn't get close to him. Even though you tried, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to, I, I tried. Yeah. You know, I tried. Did, did Alex say at half time to you? Listen, to Zed Judge, you could lay a glove on him. <laughs> get tired on him. <laughs> exactly. Um, brilliant. Uh, okay, um, downside, Ruffy Andy Robertson. I said that should have been a penalty. He's out for two months with a dislocated shoulder. The keeper clattered him. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the goalkeepers get protection. The goalkeepers come out for the ball. It's just an unfortunate fall in Topium. You know, there's nothing you can do about that. But it is a bad injury. And uh, we, all, we need all our better players. Thank God we yeah. qualified. We did. We need, as, as Lee said, we need to get back on the rails again because it's, yeah. it's important. The, the, the Georgia game and the Norway game <sighs> will depend on where we finish in this group. Yes. You know, when the group seeding comes round, we're in Group Two of the now, which is positive for the finals. If you don't get, you know, if you stay there, you're not getting two big ones. But if we don't get the two wins, we could drop into that pot three, and it, that's you back to where you don't want to be. Here's a nightmare scenario, which Lee and I were talking about mm -hmm. just before we come on here, Tom, which is because UEFA has announced the squad is going to be cut now from 26 players to 23. You're back into that area of, you know, nervousness. Am I in the 23 and that's painful if you've been with the campaign for such a long time, Lee. Yeah, that's that's quite a big one, that three players down for what would normally be there. Looking at it from Steve Clark's eyes point of view, the new, with, the, with the final two games, as, as Ruffy's mentioning, everybody's playing for a place. So they need to be at the top of their game. And then after that, wherever we finish, that's when the difficult conversation uh, comes in for Steve Clark to whoever it's going to be. Um, probably two or three of them at least would be expecting to go will be getting that uh, call to say I need a word Yeah. Uh, which isn't going to be nice it's not going to be nice at all So, but the boys, <clears throat> every one of the players right now have got a chance to go and stake their claim in the final two games and I th it's a perfect scenario I don't think Dolk's going to get in now, Pierre I think well. I think he should. Yeah, we said that. We said we take him. I think Steve Clark's very, very, very loyal as a manager. He's that, very loyal as a manager. I Peter, you've seen it over the last I, six months. Even even when players are drop out of form, Peter, he still he still puts them in the squad. Where so you're going to have three where goalkeepers. Is Best position. What position? You are you wide, 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 wide. Who, who are you? Who, who is he taking over for then? Well, he's what not. Kind of he's not. We've he's not, not really got any white, white players, have we? No, but he's not taking over from. From someone, Ruffy, I think what he's doing is it, you're looking at positions number 20 to 26. He's looking and saying, OK, is Ben Doak a better option than... And, then, and, and Well, is there, is there a striker that he's a better option? Jacob, 
you know, is he is he a better option than the front line strikers who goals are hard to come by? I think he's better off the left or the right off the main striker. I think his best opportunity is for Ben Doak is is try to get out and win in January. I think he's got to go and play football. I, th I don't think he's going to play Peter at Liverpool. That's not, listen, it's no disgrace. He's up against guys like Salah and, and <laughs> Diaz and guys like He's not going to play for Liverpool. So I think if he goes maybe up here to the Premier League or a championship club in England and plays and plays well to the end of the, to the, to the summer, that's his best opportunity. I don't think he's going to get in it if he stays at Liverpool. Yeah, big call. Anyway, um, that's how it looks. England, obviously, they've booked their spot as well, Ruffy. 3-1 over uh, Italy, just briefly. Good result for them. Yeah, we spoke about it last time we were on. Uh, we were saying that we don't have a striker of that kind of quality. And again, Kane just comes up with it. I mean, that goal he scored was just phenomenal. You know, they, they've got players all over the park now that even when they go behind, they've got the mentality to say, right, we've got players in the team who are going to win this for us. And that's what they do. Here's a contentious issue for you because uh, they booed, the England fans booed Jordan Henderson again. And, and Harry Maguire uh, let rip questioning whether they were real fans at all. Proper England fans don't boo players. Don't boo players who play for your country and dedicate their life um, to play and do everything they can to make this country have good memories and, and special moments for them, the fans and the families. So I know a lot of top, top England fans and I know the England fans who, who have been with me ever since I've been debut and they're right behind me and they're right behind Jordan as well. You, you heard a lot of cheers, yeah, a little few cheers, but they're, they're not England fans. Tell you, he's a strong-willed boy, Harry Maguire, um, but he's, he's he's absolutely leathered a, a section of the support <laughs> that will let him know. But he was getting it at Hamden, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, so he, uh, delighted. He was <laughs> Man United. So when he hears the fans diverting their attention to somebody else, I bet you deep down he's happy. Yeah. Have you ever been booed? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ibrox, aye. By your own fans? Aye. Wow. Oh, was, were you going through a bad? Feeling. Were you going through a bad? But I thought it was doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it was just bad times at the club, and yeah. I was a captain. I, I get the uh, probably two thousand behind the goal, which yeah. is quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, it's quite a lot, which tells me you weren't playing well that you counted them. <laughs> 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 no, that was that was that was a tough time. Yeah, real, absolutely. Real tough time, but you just you get you get on and get through it. Yeah. I would never come out and say that what mm. Harry Maguire said. No, absolutely not. Although, to be fair, by the way, you know, listen, we are living in times where I, I will quickly choose my words carefully here. In a democracy, you have every right to view your delight or you know the flip side of it. If you're not happy, you can boo. You know, you can boo. You can make your claim. And I don't want to misconstrue that with what we've been talking about in the last couple of weeks, which is basically people putting up banners, because the only thing that we were debating with the putting up of banners and expressing your opinion is, if it gets a club a fine, do you persist with it? And, and also the clubs have a dilemma on whether they're going to ban uh, supporters mm -hmm. from going to games because of it. Um, so there's two different issues here. But you're perfectly right, surely, um, Tam. If you, if you don't like it, it's an entertainment. Yeah, I mean... Personally, I, w I wouldn't. I wouldn't boo players, um, but everyone's entitled to their opinion, Peter. You know, if you want to go and boo someone, then fine. You pay your money, you, you go and boo them. But I think Jordan Henderson's been a great servant for England. You know, it's your country, um, so I, I wouldn't have been booing. But people are, if they want to boo players, then they can boo players. I used to get booed every week. Yeah, that was. And you want to hear the opposition fans? Yeah, there's nothing. Wor <laughs> there's, there's nothing. There's nothing worse, by the way. Do, do you know? Do you know what they say? That's that's only when you were coming on. They'd put your number up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing worse, Ruffy, than, <laughs> and I've heard this before, I feel sorry for you for that. Um, you're doing yourself a great disservice, by the way. Um, there's nothing worse than in the modern day when they read the teams out and they read the teams out and, say, and they're all going crazy. There's a big cheer and then it gets to something... Mm. Do you know that kind oh, of... Oh, he's a, playing. Do you, know that, do you know that kind of... A, and you think, all right, so they're not really, they're not really on his case. Um, but one of the worst ones ever, ever Gary Caldwell, no big Caldwell, right? He's so pig headed, right? He's, he's just, he, he doesn't care, right? So he's, he was at Hibs and he signed for, he signed for Celtic on a pre contract. And we were playing one day and his name got read out and it was boo. And then he kept playing, he tried to play diagonals and all that, sent a half, and then he was just, pick, just pinging the boy at the partner and all that. And I was playing going, just keep it simple. Every time we get the boy, he kept trying that pass. The boos were getting louder and louder, and I thought, Gary, just play it simple. Did they play it simple? No. 
he just kept playing that ball all the time. He didn't care. He was just, uh, just he was that, he was that pig-headed Gary yeah, yeah. Uh, that he kept doing it. But he was getting oh, like it for the Hibs fans. Likeable though. Likeable. I love Gary. Yeah, Gary, absolutely. I was going to say to you, very focused <coughs> and tunnel vision. I'm doing it. I don't care what anybody says. Rangers against Hibs. That will get the go-ahead. Um, and it's Philippe Clement's first game in charge. Is there, you'll be able to tell us better than anyone among the Rangers support, is there a real excitement about uh, the arrival of Clement? I think there is, um, because he's got a track record of uh, winning leagues before. Uh, in all his press conferences, I think he spoke pretty well. Um, but it all comes down, the proof in the pudding is points, results. Yeah. Um, but I think the now, <clears throat> yes, I think the... The bulk of the fans are happier that the previous manager's not there anymore and and Clement's the new manager. Yeah, Stefan van der Heyden, his old sidekick, is there alongside him, so they've got a job to do. Um, and and obviously, I think it's better when you're working with uh, people you know, Ruffy. Yeah, I think it is. I think, for me, I think the Rangers supporters will be interested in the transfer window because... It doesn't matter what manager, a new manager comes in, you're, you're waiting to see where he's going to tap into for new, for new players. You know, Bill obviously was down south. He had a, a good knowledge of the championship and he brought players up for England. It'd be interesting to see where he's going to tap into. He's going to tap into, obviously, Belgium, France. You know, he might have a better knowledge of players over there. There might be better players. So from that aspect, I think, if you're a Rangers supporter, You'll be excited when January comes, obviously, if there's money to spend. I think also, with the, if you're a Rangers fan now, you're saying seven points behind your biggest rivals in a semi-final just in the corner before the window. They need to win that semi-final. If, and that's a tough, tough game. Yeah. Um, and if they don't win that, then the crowd could turn again. I don't think so. He's got ten months. The average, the average, for, a Rangers ma- <laughs> no, but the average for a Rangers manager at the moment is ten months. Mm. He's got ten months. Uh, he's got ten months. He's got another transfer window, and he's got a chance to build his own. He side. needs time. Absolutely. Don't get me wrong. He needs Absolutely. time. If see if he loses the cup, for me, Rangers losing the league cup is could be another trophyless season. Though. Well, it could be another trophyless season, but it's it's not a it's not a deal breaker on him. He's just got to focus no, on the long term yeah. view yeah. and and. Totally block out the noise. <clears throat> I know Rangers fans would be absolutely hacked off if they didn't win the League Cup, but it's not um, a catastrophe with a new manager in place who's got a job to do and he's got to stay focused and get on with it. Um, but um, as far as speaking to the press, he was there today and we sent our man Adam Binney out there. Philippe Clement will take charge of his first match as Rangers manager when his side take on Hibs at Ibrox tomorrow. Rangers' poor start to this season's league campaign has created somewhat of a disconnect between the players and fans and that's something that new boss Clement is hoping to repair. One thing is really important for me, I want to create much more the bond between supporters, the fans and the players again. I think it's a crucial thing for this club from both sides, for the players but also for the fans. So let's start with that uh, tomorrow. Rangers will be boosted by the returns to the matchday squad of Ryan Jack, Kemar Roof, Danilo and Todd Cantwell. But if Rangers fans are expecting a complete change from what they had under Michael Beale, that's something that Philippe Clement says will take time. Um, I hope so. They see differences, but I'm not Harry Potter with the magic stick. Um, who can change everything suddenly? Uh, no, it doesn't work that way. So... That's the, the tough balance now, coming in during a season. <laughs> yeah, um, OK. Um, Harry Potter. He just has, to, he just has to, just has to avoid anything that can be misconstrued. <laughs> I can see the Harry Potter uh, heads and everything tomorrow, can you? You know, with Hagrid by his side. You just cannot do that. But a yes, bit of lack of experience there of the Scottish media. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can see it coming, can you? Um, Todd Cantwell, Ryan Jack, back. Lawrence and Matondo out. Ruff and Danilo possibly uh, a, a part to play, but maybe not the full 90 minutes, or indeed it could be from the bench. I think Cantwell's a big one for Rangers. I think he's he's been the one shining light for me from the recruitment of the last window or two. I think he's been very, he looks very good. Um, he's got a bit about him. Um, he's not scared to, to show for the ball. He's, he's brave. He makes things happen. So I think he's a big player for Rangers. Him and Lawrence. When Lawrence comes back, I think he's a, a, a tremendous player as well. So they've missed those two for that wee bit of creativity in the final third. So if they get Cantwell back tomorrow, 
um, then I think that, that definitely gives them more opportunity to go and create and score goals. Now, it, we've been fairly scathing uh, about the recruitment and the players and the way they've played. Do, well, he's got to go with what he's got. Are they as bad as what they've been portrayed or do you think he'll look and go, listen, they just need a different voice with a different tactic? I don't think they're as bad as what they they are being portrayed, as you're saying. <clears throat> I think there was a severe lack of confidence in about the squad. I think there was a maybe slight lack of togetherness as well. So um, it's up to the manager. He needs to, he needs to try mm. to give them confidence, which doesn't happen overnight, and try to get everybody pulling in the one direction. Have you been in a squad where you thought, this, there's some good players here, but listen, just nobody's listening to the manager anymore because he just talks in riddles, and then all of a sudden... I'm saying no, because that's... That's not fair. I don't want you to name them. I'm just saying, have you played for someone? <laughs> have you played for someone and you thought... Oh, do you know what? No, I haven't really. No? No, not no? really. But I've, I've spoke to a lot of people that have and they're like, yeah. I just not got a clue. And it's no... Mm -hmm. It's no nice. Yeah, absolutely. In the background, that happens, Ruffy. That's why I'm saying it. I mean, uh, I know, oh, I know, I know. Yeah, I could see the shutters coming up there from, <laughs> from Bonzo. He didn't have to hear. The Hearts oh. players, players were well, not saying that with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what I say, but I'll tell yeah. you. Yeah. Um, well, that's the first thing that supporters <laughs> say. The manager's lost the dressing room. Yeah. Yes. Isn't it? They yeah. have this vision yeah. of uh, there's a dressing room with 15 players in it and they're not listening to what the manager says. Yeah. Uh, Listen, by the way, Ruffy, a lot of players will say, that's a lot of rubbish, it doesn't happen. But it does happen. You only have to look at one of the best managers in the last 20 years, in Jose Mourinho. The Chelsea players just yeah. down tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as Lee said there, every football player's mentality is different. You know, you get, you're talking about guys who are millionaires, you know, and I don't know what motivates you if you're a, mo a millionaire, you know, but certainly a lot of them at that place just couldn't be bothered. They weren't interested in working for anybody, the supporters, the manager, whoever, and... If that's your mentality and you've got a lot of them in the dressing room, you're going to struggle. Yeah, and it's always good to get an insight into that. What motivates you as a millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, what about the opposition? Well, it's, it's all rosy in the garden, and I have to say, by the way, Nick Montgomery come on as a sub in David Gray's testimonials. He managed to ping about two or three 30-yard oh, yeah. diagonals, the old Gary Caldwell pass, and they came off as well. <laughs> I, I was a good player, Nick Montgomery. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I played with Scotland in the 21s room a couple of times. He was in the squads room and neat and tidy. He had a good career, played with, in the Premier League with Sheffield United. United. Aye. Yeah. So, a good player. Um, in terms of his management, I think he'll go tomorrow and they will go and have a Goat Rangers. I think they played 4 4 2 at uh, Tynecastle. I don't think he'll deviate too much away from that. I think he'll play the two strikers. He'll go two strikers. Though. I think he will, yeah, I think he will. I think that uh, I think he's very, very attacking coach. and. I'm not saying he's going to see it as a free hit, but I think he'll go and have a real go at Rangers. And I think that's your best opportunity to go and get a result. If he, if he goes there and he's negative and he sits men behind the ball and Rangers score, then you've got to change it. I think you just go and, and you go and have a real go. I remember under Alec McLeish, we went to Rangers and we played 4 4 2 all the time. Um, and we got a couple of draws with it, you know, we'd, we'd done okay with it. So I think he'll play he'll play Vente and, and Doidge, and I think he'll play Boyle and Johan in the wings, and he'll play Jago and Neil. I don't think he'll deviate too much from the team at Tynecastle. So, I would fancy Hibbs has got to go there and smell blood. As the manager said there, he can't change it overnight. He can't change in a week, you know, what's, what's been going on. So I think he'll go and try and take advantage of the chaos at Rangers at the minute. Yeah. Was he playing when you hit your volley? Uh, no, he wasn't. That was... Alec McLeish was the manager of Rangers. Bobby was the manager of his. It was Barry Ferguson's last game yeah. before he went to Blackburn. I right. think the f I think it was. Where was your volley for Oh, oh, about 30 yards or something. It wasn't. Sure Can I just say, well, he's got it on his iPad, he'll show you. <laughs> because it's, it's, he's only got a one megabit iPad, but, it, but it's, got, it's got all the goals on it. <laughs> but it is. It was up there with my, my, my one at Celtic Park, <coughs> 30 yards, it was similar to that. <laughs> it, it is a belter. I mean, it was a great goal. You should be proud of it. Not many people get a chance to score at Ibrox. Uh, the, and then I missed and a penalty at two each and we get beat 5 2. I'll not mention that. Yeah. Well, I'm only going to console you with this one thing, um, and Ruffy will, Ruffy will back me up in this. <laughs> I remember the reporter said to Kenny Dalglish after the game in Belgium, where Dalglish has scored one goal, which was a wonder goal, and then he scores a world-class goal after the, world go the wonder goal, and the reporter said to him, by the way, Kenny, two goals against Belgium, the second one is out of this world, and he goes, it doesn't mean anything, we lost. And I thought... Wow, 
oh, what level is he operating at? I'd have been still talking to my mates, Ruffy. But you, lost, you lost three two, didn't you? We could be three two, aye. You in goal for? Yes, aye. <laughs> That doesn't surprise me. Do you ever keep a clean sheet for Scotland? Doc <laughs> <laughs> Cotton had me a clean sheet in you in the end of it. Oh, the tally, yeah. <laughs> you scored the two goals, was that six appearances in the year or seven? Um, well, listen, I, I'm interested in that. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, the one oh, thing is... It is a good volley. It is. A, no, it's a great volley, but I'm interested more in what you said with regards to uh, how Hibs are going to play, because you certainly had the look of surprise. Let's find out what Nick Montgomery had to say with Patrick Mullen. I'm here at the Hibernian Training Centre this afternoon speaking to Nick Montgomery as his side are preparing to take on Rangers. They will travel to Ibrox tomorrow to take on a new look Rangers. Flamit Clement will be in the dugout for the very first time. But Nick Montgomery is unsure how much he'll be able to change given his short time at the club. I'm sure he'll try and implement some of his identity and, and, and what he wants to do with the team. Um, but it's pretty difficult in, in a week. Again, not sure what, what will change. Um, looked at some you know, some of the stuff from from his time at Monaco, Genk, and, and Bruges, and, and obviously been been successful in the past. And, and it's a uh, yeah, it's a it's a massive club, and I'm sure the supporters and everybody's happy that they've got a manager coming into this game. And we also spoke to Adam Lafondre, a seasoned professional here at Hibernian, one of the oldest members of this squad. But he still spoke about the excitement he gets when he gets the chance to play at the likes of Celtic Park and Ibrox. Um, and to go and sample the, you know, the atmospheres there and, and really test yourself against them. And, you know, that's one of the good things for me is that coming up here was, was something that really excited me. Uh, I don't want to sound too, like, downtrodden, of, say, if I went to League 2 and go into Stevenage away, even though they're in League 1, but, like, you know, Accrington away or someone like that. It's not something that really is going to light your fire because um, I've been and done that. So for something like this, um, you know, Rangers and, and Celtic is it's really exciting for me. Um, you know, still at the age I'm at now, um, I'm really looking forward to it. It all kicks off tomorrow at 3 p.m. Will it be Philippe Clement who gets his opening game victory, or will it be Nick Montgomery who extends his unbeaten run to seven in a row? Well, PLZ Soccer will be there live, keeping you all up to date. Yeah, thanks to Patrick Mullen there. Um, of course, Adam LaFondra, he can get ready on his social media for the Stevenage uh, and the Accrington Stanley fans giving him pelters tonight. But like Steve Evans going on the phone to him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, my it, God. It, it's so enough. I'll <laughs> flan you. What about your protection? What about your protection? Never mind your protection. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to go for two each. Two each? I think Habs can go there and score a couple of goals. OK, I'm going to go for Rangers, Ruffy. 2-1. I'm going to go for Rangers, 2-1 as well. Lee? 2-1 Rangers. 2-1, OK. Um, Hearts against Celtic. Uh, congratulations, Brendan Rodgers wins Manager of the Month. Double for Celtic. Matt O'Reilly named Player of the Month, Ruffy. Yeah, I think Matt O'Reilly's <coughs> been a big, big player for Celtic. You know, we were all talking about Callum uh, McGregor last year. Uh, now he's... I don't think Callum's hit the heights that he hit last year, so O'Reilly's taken over for him. Scoring goals, getting into good positions as well, and uh, well deserved. Yep, and the good news, I think, for the Celtic side, um, Mike uh, Narofsky, mm -hmm. or Mike um, Narofsky. Yeah, he's back training, I think. Uh, I think he's been out for a while. I think you've he's obviously paid a lot of money for him, I think £3 million, £4 million. Um, so he, obviously that's a big boost for Celtic, it increases the competition within the squad. And you know the more the more players you've got, as Leo tell you, the more players you've got to choose from, the better. The more competition in the squad. You know the higher the standard of training, people fighting for a jersey. Um, so he looked okay, and he's he's only a couple of a couple of games, but I think he'll come in and, and try and get in that team. This is what Brendan Rodgers had to say about the the game fast approaching. Uh, we've enjoyed a very successful September with some excellent performances, leading to very positive results in the league. Even in the face of some significant injury challenges, the whole squad has stood up extremely well, with so many players making important contributions um, and that is the case the strength and depth is there and I still slowly but surely can see Brendan Rodgers just starting to get people to follow his plan now the early days people were talking more about the Ange Postacoglu way and how it's changed I think as we go on now we're starting to see more of what Brendan wants uh, from his team I think so I think <coughs> he's slowly putting his mark on the squad um, they've had some, some great results. Um, they've, probably the performances at the start of the season wasn't it, up to scratch. Mm. And that's when you're saying everybody's <clears> talking about Ange and what happened last year and how they played last year. But Brendan is a very, very good coach and, and he knows the game. And I think we're starting to see now 
uh, the, the style and the way he wants to play and the mentality he's wanted players to have. And uh, massive game, massive game on Sunday. <coughs> I think it'll be really, really tight on Sunday. Um, do you want me to give my prediction? No, hang fire. And the reason why is because we've, we've got Ruffy uh, and I uh, get to the point where we're talking about things that just slightly have, have to do with football and then take us off in an area where we really, at times, find it painful, but we always give you an opinion on it. So the allocation for the match at Tyne Castle is cut now. It was 3,500 um, to 1,254 it was cut down to, and now it's just 576 fans. Yeah, I think we all agree that we want more fans, uh, opposition fans, uh, on the ground. Uh, and even Stephen A. Smith saying, you know, I want that. <coughs> They're all going by the club. <coughs> Clubs are now controlling, you know, what they're going to do. They're all looking for, off after their own supporters. And it's tit for tat, you know. They're saying unless you all get together and, you know, decide equally what you're going to do, then we're going to look after our supporters. We don't care about anybody else. And they'll get away with it because the supporters, the more supporters that they've got in of their club, then they'll be happy. Peter, as long as they're selling the tickets, I don't see the yeah. problem. As yeah. long as it, because it's... Lee's obviously played with Old Firm, I've played with Hibs. When you go away from home and you run out and you see 3,000 year away fans there, what a lift it gives you. Right. you know, in terms, so I think that our hearts are well within their rights to go, by the way, if we can sell them our own tickets and have the majority of the, the ground as our fans and a lot small pocket of Celtic fans, that surely gives us an advantage as a club. Yeah, so basically you're all for 576 and 700 fans for the opposition. As long as, as long as the home team sells them, I don't see an issue. Yeah, OK. You're the, you're the modern generation, though, who totally don't get what football's all about. <laughs> you're, you're one of those guys. That, you're one of those guys. Let me finish off and leather them. You're one, of, you're one of those guys that's killing football. You know, yeah. no, don't, let's not have fans of the opposition because you can't handle it. You can't play football in front of 7,000 Rangers or 7,000 Celtic fans because you're not sure if you're able to handle the, the, the pressure of the away fans, uh, uh, you know, get, goading you, annoying you, booing you. My God Almighty, I thought the game was... Am I... We're heading into I, the territory now. That what camp are you in? Be, I, no away fans. But I'm in the camp where give, there's got to be a home and there's got to be an away. And the bigger... Not the bigger the away, but... Let's give them the full stand. Give them the full <coughs> stand behind the goals. Yeah. Still get three home stands. You've got a point, though. Like... If Don't pander selling, to them, for God's no, sake. No, no, no. The, Tackle them. point. Because <laughs> the clubs are saying, let's just look after ourselves here. Yeah and we'll make, make more money, whatever it is, or we'll look after our fans more. Yeah. And Tynecastle will sell, sell it, but 500 and whatever it was, 76, you as well know for Henry. Seriously, you as well just saying, you know what, don't even come. We'll just sell it the full thing. Maybe there's you, Ruffy. Well, there's only four clubs can do it. You know, Hibs, mm -hmm. Hearts, Rangers and Celtic. Yeah. As far as Rangers and Celtic are concerned, because they've got twice the amount of support that Hibs and Hearts have got, I think they should be looking at their away support. You know, that not everybody can get a ticket for Ibrox or Parkhead. So there'll be a contingent of supporters like going to away games. So they're the ones that you're cutting out. Your own supporters that can't go at the home games, you're not letting them see your club at all at any of the away games. Yeah. At the big games. I just think, what's your opinion though? That was, no, that no, was you think, doing your classic roughy of painting the picture no, no, of what it's all no, about. I think, I think you sh they should have maximum allowance. I like the stand. Yeah. I stand. You know, with these big things. I like it as well. I'm not saying they should do it, but I, I'm saying I understand why the clubs are doing it. Mm -hmm. Because they want to sell, they want their own fans to sell the stadium out. No, <laughs> no, no, no. They want to sell their own stadium out and they want to have their, their own advantage. If Celtic Rangers have got three, four thousand and away fans at a game, it gives them an advantage. If you're shooting towards that goal as a Celtic Rangers player, they can sometimes suck the ball into the net. So I think that clubs are within their rights to do it. OK. Um, what's your thoughts on it? Uh, you can mention it in the section below and of course you can put it, your own point across all our social media. And we'd like to thank so many of you for <clears throat> all the positive uh, points that you have uh, raised and of course the messages you send us about the variety of uh, the content that we are providing for you uh, and thank you very much for everyone who's subscribing as well all you have to do is go to our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button and if you're on the podcast as well don't forget to follow us and share the podcast and if you want the breaking news if you download the app you'll get it all at your fingertips and you can watch live as well and, and Tam and I as ever on a Saturday at quarter to four bringing you the uh, half time full time from our reporters 
out at the grounds and uh, with that in mind you can join us tomorrow at quarter to four for the full-time results show we'd love you to do that um so there you are and don't forget all the programming kerry with uh, ruffy and tam at nine o'clock tomorrow morning breaking on our youtube channel we've got the journals program We've also got a Straight Talk, which I think for people of a certain vintage next week. Right now, it's Paul Lambert and a one-to-one. Very good. One. I watched it yesterday. Very good. I thought uh, Paul was in sparkling form. He was really good, wasn't he? Awkward questions. Yeah, he's. Uh, he was really good though because he's he's, he he's so good. humble, isn't he? Yes, he uh, very humble and just, it just pipped the the other one, the McGeady one, just a wee bit. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to, you're trying to pick a fight, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. What was wrong with the McGeady one, Ruffy? Um, I was on the oh, back okay, foot from minute bit, one, by the way. A wee bit uh, tense. Yeah, that's the word. That's the word, Ruffy. <laughs> that is the word. It was one of those, it was one of those interviews where you're actually trying to pay him a compliment. He wants to pick a fight with you. Um, <laughs> Anyway, apart from that, um, it's really good. And for those who understand what the straight talk's all about, we're going to try and interview as many interesting people right across the board. doesn't need to be football, it can be entertainment. Next week, for those of a certain vintage, I would listen to uh, straight talk because Graham Skinner is my special guest. Now, look at, look at that blank look in your face there. Um, Graham's the lead singer with Hipsway. Um, big Rangers fan. Um, yep, and uh, really great. Um, just talking about the fame of Hipsway and the, uh, the hits and all that. Ruffy, you know, pop stars love to uh, love to get a wee insight into that. We're speaking to politicians and lots of people from the entertainment game as well. Yeah, I mean, we had a hang about a show a long time ago, but uh, what clubs had big, you know, singers or groups, you know, associated to them. A lot of them are quite happy to come out and say, oh, I'm a disc supporter or whatever. Yeah. I met the big boy up at Dundee United. Uh, what was his name? The lead singer with... Ricky Ross. Boy. Ricky Ross. Ricky Ross. Yeah. I mean, he's a director, that, or he was a director at Dundee United. And obviously you've got the Hibs boys, the Claimers. And who did Hearts have? I can't remember who Hearts had. They had a, a pop star who supported them. That's a question for next week's competition, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, um, I think there's lots of... Uh, do you, uh, any big Rangers fans that you came across? Who was Big Country? Who were they? Dan uh, Fairman. Fairman, yeah. Stuart Adamson. Yep. Uh, anybody you can think of that came to see the games that was a big... Amy McDonald? Yeah, yeah, oh, Amy, yeah, at one point, yep, good shout. Uh, and the High Bees is the most famous. Fish, you've got fish as well. Fish, fish yeah. is a big... Always made a splash. Yeah. Uh, OK, let's move on now uh, to another issue, which oh, is... James Arthur. James Arthur. Aye. He came into train with us one day. Good shout. Stole my boots. Did he? Right. Um, was he any use? Was he any good? I want them back. Yeah. Was he any good? No, rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that, Lee. That's what, honestly, I've never met so many professional footballers who, who and see if you make a bad pass, Ruffy. The, prof <laughs> the professional footballers do this. They look at each other and go, <laughs> you know, you know, and then they stop the game and put cones down and tell you where you went wrong, you know. <laughs> Still, enough about Alec Ray. Let's crack on. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Green Brigade, that'll take the smile off your face, Ruffy. Um, they released a statement on Wednesday urging fans to fly the Palestine flag in the Euro game against Atletico. The statement asked fans to be courageous in the face of any obstruction and reports on Wednesday have claimed that they've been locked out of the stadium for the next four um, away games. I don't know if that's true. We're waiting on clarification for it, but quite clearly there is a storm brewing yeah, particularly what's happening, you know, abroad. You know, you would think they'd be sensible enough to know that the club is going to get fined in, in, in some way. And, it, and when that fine comes, it's them that's going to be directed at and they're going to spoil their, their own chances of getting into a game. You know, I, I, I don't know if protesting outside the park uh, doesn't bring the same bad press on the club, but certainly inside the club, the way things are going, the way people have been killed on both sides, I don't, don't think it's a sensible thing to do. Yeah, uh, and, and with that in mind, uh, I can clarify that um, Ruffy is talking about the implication of flying a banner inside the ground because it breaks UEFA rules. Um, he's not offering any comment on the situation one side or the other. I need to clarify that just basically because um, quite simply, some people don't hear um, things in context. They only hear what they want to hear. And with such a difficult situation uh, as Israel and Palestine um, is at the moment un unfolding, um, we are talking about it in a sporting context of a club 
taking a fine um, for the flying of banners. And we're not talking about the legitimacy of uh, those banners or otherwise. So uh, I feel as if I need to clarify that point because at times, you know, the world's gone mad. Um, what about uh, Hearts and uh, Celtic as far as the Hearts camp is concerned? Adam Binney was in there uh, at the Orium to find out. Hearts host Celtic at Tynecastle on Sunday in their first match since returning from the international break. This will be the first time that Brendan Rodgers has managed at Tynecastle since returning to Celtic in the summer. But it'll be a very different atmosphere this time. That's because Celtic's away allocation has been cut since Rodgers was last at the club. It's expected that only around 700 Celtic fans will be allowed into the ground. They're only allowed up to a third of the Roseburn stand where previously they would have had that entire stand behind the goal and it's a decision that manager Stephen Naismith absolutely supports. Us as a club need to look after our fans. We, consistently over the last six, seven years there's been a growth in the club in every department, the business side, the, the stadium, the, the club are looking to progress and develop as much as they can. With all that and the, the, the fans and the ownership brings that you have a bigger following. The, 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 the following's growing and growing and when we've got a fantastic stadium, why would we not want to pack out our own fans? Hearts have been without veteran goalkeeper and club captain Craig Gordon since Boxing Day of last year when he suffered a horrendous double leg break injury. And today, manager Stephen Naismith confirmed that he is now back in full training and we could even see him again in a Scotland shirt at next summer's Euros. Obviously get some minutes in a game that we played, um, which is... Uh, the first kind of next step for him, um, which is brilliant. So he's now in that zone where he needs to get some minutes to just sharpen up that that last moment, that bit. But in terms of injury and training, he's now consistently training, which is brilliant. Yeah, I mean, great, because quite simply, if you look at Craig Gordon's career, uh, there are two sections of it with long injuries, a um, uh, long period out with injuries that many people had written him off and he's come back and he's come back and won lots of medals. Yeah, I think Ruffy touched on it earlier. I think he broke his arm. Was it, was it Sunderland? He broke his arm and it looked as if he was he was finished. I remember going in and training with Dumbarton when I came back from America and Craig Gordon was in training with Dumbarton and I was in training as well. Ian Murray was a pal of mine and just let us train and that was Craig just starting to get back into it again. I think he trained with Rangers for a period as well. And, and got his career back. So you've got to, you've got to tip your hat to him. He's, he's, what, 40 year old now? He's still fighting to get back in there. I just mentioned during the clip there, it's quite a long time for it to come back from a leg break. He's done it in Boxing Day and it's now, you know, near enough the end of October. So there's obviously been maybe one or two issues. I don't know if it was with his age or, or maybe the, the bone healing. But he wanted to get back in training, Peter, and he wanted, he wanted to get in that squad for the Euros. Um, I think there's, there's one place probably up for grabs in terms of Xander Clark and Liam Kelly is that third keeper um, and I think if Craig's fit and he's playing mm. then I think he'd be in the squad for Scotland as well I agree with Tam what about you tough yeah. call on it mm. I think he'll be in the squad if he's back Hearts number one with his experience he'll, I think he'll be in the squad whether, whether he plays or not um, but the mental strength that he's got to come back from mm. these injuries like when he was first back into the club after it happened he was just he was, the only thing he was talking about is getting back on the pitch and playing the easy way it would have been, you know what, I've had a bad injury, I'll just call it a day. But no, he was like <coughs> focused on that, getting back playing. And Xander will be saying, yeah, great to know. see you back, Craig. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, that's his target, isn't it? Yep. You know, that, that is it. You know, get back in the first team. And unfortunately for Xander, he's the one that's going to suffer. Well, we don't know if it is going to be him, but certainly if you're playing in the first team, you would think you get first shout. But uh, we're seeing how loyal, you know, as Tam touched on, how loyal or Steve Clark is, you know, but I think if Craig's in there playing regularly and, and the form that we know he can play, he would be in that squad. Yeah, OK. Big call for Steve Clark. Of course, it's a big call because we uh, alluded to at the start of the programme, 23 players to be picked, not 26. Um, Aberdeen, that match is off. So is the match at Perth uh, for St Johnson. So uh, it's a, a greatly reduced card in the Scottish Premiership. Kilmarnock against Livingston. Kelly sitting ninth with just one league win from eight league games. Um, and uh, I think Derek McInnes certainly will hope they can start to get a, a run of games where they can get some wins. I noticed Gary Mackay-Steven um, training with them, albeit 
just getting his fitness up and trying to get a club, but you never know. No, I mean, that's it. You have to impress in training. You know, if you get a chance in the, to play at the weekend, you, if you see, we know the ability he's got. You know, at the top level, he was superb to watch. He could tear any team to, to bits, you know. But I think, you know, the disappointment in Kilmarnock has been obviously beating Rangers, beating Celtic, and then coming out with that stat you've just got there. Derek must be wondering why they hadn't kicked on for these games. What's he like? Why didn't he get a regular game? Who got him, Kai Stephen? I think it's consistency, um, tremendous ability, great guy in the dressing room, um, but I think the consistency levels were up and down all the time. I think he needs a he needs a run, of games. He needs a run of games, and it helps the is, manager. Is he another player who comes into the consideration depending on what formation you're playing, what style? I think, well, at the time we were. 4 2 3 1 or 3 4 3 with 2 10, so he, would, he could play as a 10 or off the wide area. Yeah, what do you mean by consistency then? He was, he, he, you get great for him out of him one week and then disappear the next? <clears throat> Not so good <clears throat> the next. Yeah. And then up and down quite a lot, but ability wise, like really, really good. Really, yeah. really good. And Dell's worked with him before, Derek's worked with him before, obviously, at Aberdeen, so. He knows him, he knows how to put his arm round him, I think. I'd be surprised if he doesn't sign her. He did have two really good, I mean, I know he went to New York, but he did have really two good spells with two clubs in Scotland, Aberdeen and Dundee United. Yeah, listen, I think that Dundee United team, there was a load of them. Yeah. I think that we ran gold was there as well. Armstrong, they had a very, very good team at Dundee United and they all enjoyed their football, they all came through the ranks together and... Uh, I'm disappointed. I, th I think he's a really good player. I'm disappointed. I, I, obviously, Lee's worked with him. He's maybe just one of those players that's he's an arm round him and a run of games. And Dale might give him that. And uh, it'd be a good pick up if he's fit and he's he's ready to go and he's hungry. It'd be a good pick up for Kamarnik to get him to the end of the season. Yeah, need to get wins. No excuses from Derek McKinnon's about the pitch. Tough. Um, I've managed against Livingston and Davies team for a, a while now, over a period of time, over a few years, and never had it easy. Um, you know, I think uh, a good thing is they'll not have any complaints about the pitch. Um, you know, I think it, uh, it's two two teams who will be looking to, to win a game. There's not a lot between a lot of the teams. I think the league table shows that. Yeah, uh, Livingston, six, two wins from eight league games. Not a, not all that impressive. Not just one game more than, than Kelly. How do you see it going, Lee? I, think, I don't think it'll be a spectacle, to be brutally honest. Um, Again, I think it'll be tight, uh, but I'm going to go one each. Yeah, Ruffy? I think both teams will struggle on the surface, because I'm not used to it, obviously. <laughs> so I think I'll sit in the fence. You go sit in the fence? You're going for a draw? <laughs> yeah, I, I think Livingston's one of the teams you don't want to play against. You know, yeah. they've got that, you know, they all work for each other, they're all battling <laughs> away, they've got Bruce Anderson who can come up for a goal. Uh, just I don't think come on, hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up, going to go for one each. Hurry up, one each. I'm going to go Kilmarnock to win. One each, nailed on. Okay, uh, we didn't give each other the heart Celtic score. We all managed to sneak away yeah. for that, Ruffy. 2 0 Celtic. <laughs> okay, uh, 3 1 Celtic. One each. Oh, he's still got his wee heart connection, isn't he? <laughs> 2-1 Celtic. <laughs> I forgot all about that, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, we will see, because remember, by the way, we all remember, so you're getting leather. If we, if we, if we sense at any point, as I said to you before this show, if we sense any raising of any flag, we're on it, Tom. Yes. Am I right? Yeah. You know? Obviously, my heart's still pining them. Anyway, next game. First county. <coughs> now, listen, we're talking about games being off. I don't see the value in Ross County St Mirren being on uh, tomorrow, Ruffy, because that's a trek, even if it was 750 fans, which it won't be, but that's a trek to an area when you're asking people to drive in very difficult yeah. conditions. Yeah, well, obviously you've got to check the, the forecast before you leave, you know, that uh, it seems to be just down a wee bit, so the worst of it, but uh, certainly it's a game, both of them will be looking for three points. You know, if you're looking at the fixture list, you know, so I'm not go up there and try and take something out of the game, but for me, Ross County have got to start winning games. Are you going for County? No. Well, why did you say that then? I'm go for one each. Just saying I'm going for Ruffy. Go one each. <laughs> one each. Just honestly, I could just read them like a book now. Yeah, I'm going, yeah, to, go. I'm going to go two one to St Mern. I think St Mern can get me in one. Yeah. Um, I'll get one nil St Mern. One nil St Mern. Okay. Um, now, 
positive stuff, and we've got to be positive about it. Um, we've argued over fans and the allocation and all of that, but I think you've got to look <coughs> and say to yourself, the SPFL have released the figures, and it's a record turnover of 41.9 million. It's up by 6% on the previous accounts. Um, so that's good news because it means that the clubs get more money paid down to them all, um, which is good. It's the first time Neil Doncaster says, um, as you can see there, look at the, the distribution of the clubs up 6% to 35.8 million. Uh, Neil Doncaster says this is the first time the SPFL turnover has broken the £40 million pound figure, especially in light of the ongoing economic challenges. Today's figures are testament to the continuing popularity of Scottish football and the growing demand from broadcasters and other partners. So with that in mind, you've got to, you've got to compliment them. Um, the figures are good. They could be better because that's the way we are in this country. We always look and say to ourselves, there could be bigger sponsorship deals, there could be more sponsorship deals. I, I, I hasten to add that the next couple of years could be really tricky the way the whole broadcasting is going. And I hope that, I hope that Neil and the rest of the team have the ability to really sell our product. And, and I think there's a good chance of that now that... I'm going to be honest about it. I think there's a good chance of that because I think Rangers, the board, is moving in a really positive direction. I'm going to be very complimentary towards them because I think John Bennett and the rest of that board are saying, time to stop picking fights, time to start looking forward, time to start, you know, looking at the, the you know, the greater good of all. I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. There might be still some bickering in the background, Ruffy, but. I think we're heading in the right direction. And that there, that set of figures is something to build on. So, so collectively, is that figures all sponsorship that's come in? Or is that counting the, the crowds that are all up and everything? Or is it just the, the sponsorship stuff? Well, I think it's the, uh, payments to the, I think the payments to the clubs, the money that's coming in. Oh, the, the, the payments to the club is, is priceless. You know, it goes right down the whole divisions, you know. Yeah. And teams lower down, £60,000 can be a lifesaver. So the more money they bring in and the more they distribute it and distribute it evenly... You know, I think it's good for the, the everything in our country. I, I think they could, and this is just an observation, it's not a criticism, it's an observation that I think we could promote ourselves even more because the fans, and I take your point, I know we are joking with you earlier, if, if Stephen Naismith says, right, we're taking care of our fans because more and more are coming, all well and good. But I like to see a game where there's, an allocation, a huge allocation, or at least a half decent one for away supporters as well, because that's the essence of sport for so me. Are. You know? Yeah. But but if, if if we're in a situation where more and more fans and you know what Scotland's like, per head of population, we are nuts for for football. Yeah. The figures are tremendous for me, I think. Come back to your point in the game, yes, at my opinion, you need away fans to make it a better atmosphere, which makes it a better spectacle for people coming to the game or watching on telly um, but I can see the point it's Stephen's point um, as well so this is positive because it's gone up imagine it was going down yeah like that's so it's gone up there's more uh, interest in the games now <laughs> and with, with the payments going down the league's budgets are getting bigger which attracts better players so hopefully that continues and the standard the actual overall standard uh, gets lifted as well. Yeah, well, and of course, we look to our right hand side here because guys like you are part of that little structure of the standard. We really want to see more and more. Yes, we know they're going to get cherry picked to the other leagues, but we want hopefully more and more people coming through who are Scottish who get a chance to play regularly, Tom. Yeah, listen, it's, it was great there. And I was hoping Max Johnson got on the other night. He's, he's a young player that's come through the performance skills, and I've always said. You know, the performance skills are a very, very good thing. It's, it was going to take time. Billy Gilmer's come through, Nathan Parsons come through, Max Johnson's the next one. It was always going to take time for to see the shoots of that yeah. coming through. You know, we want everything tomorrow in this country. And it was always going to take time. So, no, I, th I think it's positive. I think we could do more to promote the game. Uh, but, listen, Neil's, Neil's obviously had a lot of stick from clubs, from, from particularly for Rangers. But I think if you look at the figures, then they're decent. But I still think we can do more, Peter. I still think we can bring more money into <clears> the game. Yeah, I agree with you. And it happens when you stop bickering and you stop having self-interest and you start looking for the collective and the greater good of all rather than individual mm -hmm. clubs. Um, uh, it's been one of those days on the programme today where we're all just, you know, making, pontificating about you-know-what, Ruffy. You know, it's, it's one of those programmes today, isn't it? 
It seems to be, yeah. And I get that feeling as well, roughly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Do you know what? A bit spiky, roughly. You like that? A bit I like a bit. I like a bit of spike, but the only the only thing I know is about it? a Friday. <laughs> The only thing I notice about a Friday, Ruffy, is there seems to be an edge to this side, and you two seem to have a more laid-back approach to things. Yeah. I, I think you should, it's, bec it's because you're on a living game run of five without a win. <laughs> you need to get your finger out. Um, but when when Lennon's in that chair, I notice there's a wee bit more of an edge to you because he ups his game, game didn't he? Ruffy right. ups his game a wee bit. He does because Neil, Neil would Neil would, be Neil would I'm not getting the best at you. You know, oh, so no. you need to. <laughs> You need to. I need to put an arm around you and tell you what it's about. Because uh, Neil, as you know, would pick a fight with anybody. Um, Tenali, there's another news item, Ruffy, just before we finish. Newcastle United midfielder, a ban after admitting betting on Serie A games while at Milan. He's been investigated. Um, I think, you know, we all have to look at uh, Nicolo Fagioli, who was given a seven-month ban this week. I think they're expecting it. Newcastle standing by their £55 million summer <laughs> signing, of course they are. But... I think he could be out for a long time. Yeah. The thing about it is, we all know it's, it's going on, you know, but they all know the consequences. And if if you continue to do it and you get caught, then hell mend you. You, know, like you, you deserve to get it. Yeah. Oh, we better spike right at the end there, eh? So you should get a long, long ban then. You, you agree Four with that? More than that. Fair what? Fifth. More than that. <laughs> he wasn't betting against his own team. He was betting, betting on his he's team. betting. You're not allowed to bet. Right, OK. It's a blanket. Right. I know. OK, see how he's fighting back now. See how, <laughs> see Listen how, to me. I know, see, how, <laughs> see how he's fighting back. It's taking him 56 minutes. Um, English Premiership fixtures, of course. Uh, Liverpool and the Merseyside Derby. That's to look forward to. Uh, Bournemouth take on Wolverhampton. Brentford, Burnley. Man City, Brighton. Newcastle, Crystal Palace. Nottingham Forest against Luton Town, Chelsea Arsenal, uh, Sheffield against Manchester United, Aston Villa, West Ham and Tottenham against Fulham on the Monday. So Chelsea Arsenal certainly one to watch, but Liverpool against Everton uh, and the Merseyside derby is the one for me, Ruffy. Certainly is. I think everybody's got memories of, of these games. Obviously, supporting these two teams, I think remember is uh, the Rooney score against Liverpool. A young, yeah. a young Rooney. Was it Arsenal? First on? Arsenal was against Arsenal. Arsenal. So against that was his Arsenal. first one. Yeah. I mean, obviously not. And what's your point? My pal is with Graham Sharp, obviously, and Sharp yeah. that used to tell me about the games that he used to play in. And we all know our games are competitive, but they, that one there is another. It's not life or death. It's more important than that for them. Yeah, that's an old Bill Shankly quote. Um, Sharpie scored one of the best Merseyside derby goals at Anfield, took it on his chest. Volley, roof of the net, unbelievable goal, uh, Ruffy. Um, right up there with the type of goal that you scored, mm. uh, Tam. <clears throat> Just in case you're wondering, thinking, wow, all four of them supporting Liverpool uh, for the game um, at the weekend? The answer is emphatically no. Um, we're wearing red because it's wear red day in support of Show Racism, the red card. And as I always say, because I'm an ambassador for Show Racism, is in the red card, Ruffy, it's not just a two-week period that we need to emphasise no. to everyone and highlight, <clears throat> um, you know, the error of their ways if they think, you know, being racist and sectarian and any abuse towards anybody, race, creed, colour, gender, the lot. Yeah, and it, it, we should be doing it every year because every time we do it, we think we're getting there, you know, and then and, and you keep talking about the, 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 found, the funding of the the show racing, but it always raises its ugly head. So the, the more and more we do it, the better it's got to be because it, in certain places it's getting out of hand. Yeah, I was at the Scottish Parliament and I did mention, as you know, because I'm gobby that way, um, I did mention to all the MSPs and let them have it with both barrels that it's one of the least funded projects in Scotland, which amazes me when Is you consider, mm -hmm. you consider the problems we have um, it, it really deserves more backing, especially the great work that they do at grassroots level, Lee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, inc it's incredible, isn't it? No, it is. I think uh, we could do more, um, as you're saying, um, more awareness to it. And it keeps cropping back up now and again, which isn't acceptable. Um, but when you look back, maybe I think we've came... We've came a distance in the last maybe 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. Anyway, so as long as we keep progressing with it, but um, yeah, uh, agreement with you. Yeah, because uh, I talk about it because you guys at Hearts, like every other club, would hold the cards up for two weeks and then people think, well, we've done our bit. I know. And that's it. Know. It's, yeah. it's not over, you know. Yeah, um, we've done that. You've done that plenty of times with different uh, clubs. It's, it's a one day a year. You go out, you warm up with the t-shirts on, and then you, you, you throw them in the cupboard. Yeah, you know, it's, it's got to be. It's got to be more than that. It's got to be. It's got to be more sustained. Uh, 
you know, a market and whatever it is, but they've obviously got the money to do that, Peter, yeah. but there's got to be there's got to be more done. Yes, absolutely. I'd like the MSPs to get uh, their finger out and see if they can work out ways where they can look for a budget that can enhance the great work that Show Racism, the red card, uh, does in Scotland. Um, so I'll leave you on that positive note and ask you if you get a chance, if you like our programme, uh, remember, you're not always going to agree with us. You might disagree and you might want to have a go at us. We embrace that as long as you're not abusive. Hit the subscribe button. We'd love to have you on board as part of the football family. There's so much to watch. And I would ask you this question, um, bearing in mind the uh, television companies and radio companies and broadcasters that we have all across the country, we are giving you so much variety um, for you to enjoy, hopefully, uh, that you'll come along with us. We're certainly up there uh, with the best of them as far as giving you as much content as possible. If you want breaking news, download the app. If you want to read uh, more extensive coverage of Scottish football, English, European football and world football, look on the website. And uh, if you want to watch some of the great programming, Paul Lambert's on Straight Talk. The Women's Football Show is on with some fabulous guests. Uh, Tam and Ruffy are there with Kerry Pollock on a Saturday morning. We've got results shows. We've got the journals on. There's so much for you to enjoy and lots of great documentary stuff as well. Hit the subscribe button and thank you to Lee, to Ruffy, to Tam and from myself, Peter Martin. Have a great weekend.